Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be putting back on our on-chain analysis hat, and we're going to be discussing transaction fees. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've talked some about transaction fees, and if you follow me on Twitter, then you, you will have seen me posting this chart um, over the last uh, couple of weeks or so. And the reason is because we saw a spike in transaction fees, the total transaction fees, that actually went higher than the peak in 2021. If you were to look at the mean, you can see that it, it didn't really quite reach there. And if you look at the median, you can see that it didn't really quite reach there. But the total transaction fees, again, went higher a few days ago than they went back in April of 2021. Now, I'm going to zoom in to sort of just this range here. And what you'll notice is that historically, when the transaction fees goes up, right, this quickly, it is often a, a signal that the market is extremely heated, right? You can see that it really goes up into a parabolic rally. You can see that it happened in 2017. We can see that it also happened in, in 2021 as well, right? Just a series of really higher lows and higher highs into a parabolic rally that ultimately saw transaction fees peak at a, at a fairly high level. And if you think back to those times, there, there, there certainly are a lot of narratives that sort of get spun up around those times, right? Like, and again, I mean, like, who can blame them? But it, it's sort of like, you know, it's not ready. Like, Bitcoin's not ready for the main stage. Um, yeah, or at least it's not always necessarily going to be perceived as a great means to transact, especially in, in say, third world countries where, you know, you will see some, some element of adoption when it costs you you know, 20 bucks or something to sort of send a transaction. And a lot of times when that happens, then the hype, you know, the hype wears off and it's like, all right, well, yes, it's a great technology, but they still need to get some stuff figured out. Now, obviously, you know, this, the, the spike in transaction fees in this instance was caused by a very different thing than the last two times. The last two times, you can see that we had parabolic rallies that led in to these high transaction fees. This time, that was not the case. And you may say, well, Bitcoin did go up. Yeah, but this spike occurred after the peak. At least this local high, right? This spike does not look the same as these other ones. And of course, it's caused by, you know, these ordinals, these, these uh, BRC20 tokens that have been recently created. And, you know, I, I do struggle to, to, to fully, you know, to fully know what I, what I think about all that. But I will say that one positive thing that has come out of all this is I think it's forcing some, some more centralized entities and centralized exchanges to adopt Lightning, which, which should help, you know, clear, clear up the mempool. But I also want to zoom in here. You can see that transaction fees have actually been coming down very quickly almost as fast as they went up, they're coming right back down. And while we did hit a peak not too long ago at 17.42 million, it's all the way back down to about around 5.22 million. So this is a pretty big drop in the transaction fees. You can see that previous times when it hit pretty high levels, like over here, it also hit around 17 million. And then, you know, within a few within a few uh, days, really, it was down to around five or six million. And and then it just sort of slowly bled as we as we got into the summer months. Right. And I talked not too long ago. Right. We talked what a few days ago about the idea of or maybe a few weeks ago uh, about the idea of a summer lull. Um, it doesn't have to happen. And, and of course, you could still have a spike up in the price and it still precede the summer. But oftentimes, there is waning interest, not only in crypto, but in, in equities as well, as you get into the summer. It's just like, you know, people, rather than stare at a screen all day and, and look at, at trading and whatnot, they 
I, I know it's crazy, right? But they, they go outside and they, they touch the grass and they, they do that sort of stuff. And, and so there is this idea of, of interest in crypto can really wane during those summer months. And so I, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to just sort of see this play out in a very similar manner, right? Where it just sort of slowly goes back down as people just stop caring. Um, we saw a very similar thing in 2019 as well. Um, you know, we, we did see a spike in transaction fees, obviously not nearly as high as, as what we saw this time. And you can see that it, it really topped out in June. So if, you know, I mean, it, it topped out about six weeks later in the year than, than where we are right now. But once it topped out, you can see that it, it really just sort of slowly came back down and then uh, came back down to relatively low levels at around 100K, 100K or so. And it stayed there until, you know, the second quarter of 2020 um, before, it, before it really started to go back up again. And so I think we're likely going to see something very similar where as we get into the second half of the year, I think you'll likely see interest sort of fall off. And, and then we get to the halving year and then everything will change. And um, there'll be a, a, a renewed interest, I think. I think people will start to be a little bit more upbeat again. But we've talked about how the pre-halving years is essentially, you know, half up, half down, get both bulls and bears sufficiently wrecked. And then we go into the halving year and everyone's kind of on the same page. Um, but, you know, I look at this and I just think, well, I mean, you know, all this sort of hype has come into, into some of these, like, you know, these meme coins and whatnot. And normally, normally Bitcoin has a way of, of sort of punishing uh, this sort of stuff when it, when it, when it happens. Same thing happened in 2019 as well. So I, I, I would be cautious. But again, like the transaction fees historically has been a pretty good indicator of a of a local high for Bitcoin. And I mean, maybe you can make the same case this time, but not really, not not in the exact same way. I mean, it, it's not it, it's I, I suppose it's not the exact same signal that you would have had before. And because of, of you know, the, you know, sort of some of this new stuff going on on with Bitcoin. So just an interesting chart. I, I thought I would share it with you. If you don't follow me on Twitter, uh, perhaps you, you missed this and you, you, you didn't see what I was uh, sort of referencing, but you can see that it is, it is actually falling back down fairly quickly. I would sort of suspect you're going to see it chop around for a little bit. Um, I might bounce back up, but uh, as we get into the summer months, I, I think you'll slowly see it uh, go back down and, and it probably won't really start to go back up again in a sustained way until you know until um until next year okay i'm not trying to sort of diminish the idea that you you could see immediate new interest right i mean like there is there is this idea of you know you, you can see spikes back up to the upside right like that that could happen i mean it, it sort of spiked over here in may and then spiked again in june so i don't really know of course what's going to happen in the next month or so but again as we get into the second half of the year I would suspect that it will likely sort of trail off here again and then see some type of renewed interest in the having year. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can get access to charts such as this. We also do have a free tier, so if you, if you don't want to sign up for, for the premium stuff, there's also a free tier as well. You get access to a chart. Um, and, a, and a weekly newsletter. So make sure you guys check that out. Also, next week, I won't be posting as many videos. I will be at, at Bitcoin Miami. So if you see you know, me stop posting videos for a week or something, it's just because I'm in, I'm in um, Miami. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.